Hey, what up, trades? I want to do a video analysis update of the stock market. We'll talk about the S&P, as well as Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and AMD, Qualcomm, Taiwan Semis, and Facebook, Netflix, Disney, John Deere, and Boeing, Carnival Cruise Lines, AstraZeneca, Barrett Gold Corp, and Tesla, Enphase Energy, and Neo, Lee Auto, Plug Power, and Alibaba, Amazon, Shopify, PayPal, and Roku, AMC Theaters, Sundial Growers, Pounder, Marathon Patent Group, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. So, let's get right into it. We have SPY forming a Wave 1 and a Wave 2. Then Wave 3 was, at least, the length of Wave 1 placed at the Wave 2 low. I suspect we've already ended wave four at the 38.2% fib, so above the 50% fib of 399, the length of wave one placed at the wave four low, says SPY is within wave five to 550. And if we look at some of these other stocks in the semiconductor sector that could end up being conservative, here's Apple from the quad witching September low. We form a wave one and a wave two. Then we have a big wave three. I believe we've ended wave four right around that 50% fib. So I think we hold 149, 150. A very wide invalidation would be 141, but I think we get really nice levels from a lot of the semiconductor stocks to the downside, but not only to the downside, also to the upside, to suggest Apple will not end Wave 5 at the length of Wave 1 placed at the Wave 4 low of 192. I believe Wave 5 will be the length of Wave 3 placed at the Wave 4 low, this blue line, and that will take Apple up to 216. So, very similar to Apple. We have a conservative target with Microsoft. We have an aggressive target with Microsoft. I think this is a Wave 1 and a Wave 2. This is a big Wave 3. We make a new high in price and a new high on the weekly RSI. That has suggested in is, looks like it's going to play out again, that this was not a massive wave five that occurred. I believe this was a huge wave three that occurred. This is wave four that ended at the 50% fib. So I think 270 holds, very wide, kind of like Apple would be 254. The length of wave one places the wave four low, gives a conservative wave five target of 371. The, the length of wave three places the wave four low, gives a more aggressive, more accurate wave five target of 421. That's where kind of that wider level might come in. But anyway, Here's NVIDIA and AMD. And I think they're really, you know, objectively, even if someone's not an LA Wave Theorist, even if someone's not a bull, right, they got the downside risk level right now from NVIDIA, right? Okay, that's NVIDIA. If it's above 206, then that's the downside risk. So if we're above 206, then I need to look at the upside risk. And I think very similar to what's gone on in oil, we're going to learn about upside risk, not just in semiconductor stocks, but in a lot of uh, sectors like travel. Anyway, this is a wave one and a wave two, really regardless of where this wave one begins, whether it's this low in 2020 or this low in 2019, or I think maybe that was 2018, but anyway, wherever wave one begins, if I took the length of it and I placed it at the wave four low, wave five would not make a new high above the wave three high. So in Elliott wave three, one of the principles is that wave five will either be the length of wave one or the length of wave three placed at the wave four low. Since it's not going to be the length of wave one, I suspect it will be the length of wave three placed at the wave four low. And that says the wave five target is about 430. So AMD gives, you know, a very kind of similar idea and it gives a really nice kind of timing for when this could play out, you know, especially if we see the 78.6% fib of 92 hold, if we see NVIDIA hold above 206, then I think we have, you know, a lot of upside in NVIDIA and AMD, which means we probably have a lot of upside in the market, right? We saw, you know, Tesla recently, and I think we could see a few more, you know, stocks that really give supporting evidence that says, hey, we have the downside risk right now of these recent lows, you know, the 78.6% retracements. Now we need to look at the upside risk. And I think we're going to see with AMD why looking at upside risk will be important. I think it's a wave one and a wave two, and this is a seven month rally. So normally wave three is at least the length of wave one, in time and price so maybe you know seven months from now could actually be conservative to say the length of wave one placed with wave too low could take amd up to 191 now that could be conservative because wave three a lot of times is faster than wave one in time and a lot of times it actually goes beyond the length of wave one placed with wave too low but even if wave three ended at 190 and we had a shallow wave four that retests the wave one high wave five would be the length of wave one placed with the wave four low so if we're above 92 that's the downside risk. And the upside risk says that waves one, two, three, four, and five from the May low could take AMD up into the 250s. Now, that sounds crazy, right? But I think we're going to see, you know, a lot of these semiconductor stocks make some progress and, you know, NVIDIA going to 430 won't be crazy. Okay, anyway, this is a wave one and a wave two for Qualcomm. I think this is a big wave three and a wave four that ended at the 38.2% fib. So from this low, I believe we began a large degree wave five. This is wave one and wave five and wave two and wave five. The length of wave one placed the wave too low. So the very conservative wave three target is 209. The 161 pay percent extension is 236. And even if we had a shallow wave four that retested the wave one high, the length of wave one placed the wave four low says ultimately waves one, two, three, four, and five can take Qualcomm up to 263 if it's above 122. And I think really tight would be the 78.6% fib of 137. Here's Taiwan Simis. It didn't end wave four at either of these lows, but I think it's ending wave four 
So here is Taiwan Semis. I think that this is a wave one and a wave two, and this is a big wave three, and we ended wave four at the 38.2% retracement of wave three. So if we're above the 50% fib, this is 93. The 61.8% fib, we'll talk about why that could be a very wide level. I don't think we're gonna get to the 61.8% retracement, but we'll talk about why that wouldn't be the end of the world in the long term. I think we have a lot of supporting evidence uh, with Taiwan semis from NVIDIA, from AMD. So we also have really nice lows to trade against uh, kind of in, in the sister sector. But if we look at Taiwan semis, I think this is a wave one and wave two. And this is a big wave three and an ABC correction that looks like it ended wave four at the 38.2% FIB. So if we're about the 50% FIB of 93, the length of wave three placed at the wave four low can take Taiwan semis up to that big round number of 200. Now, I don't think it's going to happen, but even if we went down to the 61.8% percent retracement, which is 81, I would say that this is a, another wave one and another wave two. I don't think that's going to play out, and I think a lot of the evidence that won't play out is because of NVIDIA and because of AMD, but if we're above the 50% FIB of 93, this is a wave three and a wave four. The length of wave three places the wave four low, so as a wave five target, while all these semis rally, could take TSM up to 200 and we may see in the future uh, that we're not within wave five for Taiwan semis. Anyway, here is Facebook. This is a wave one and a wave two. And I believe this is another wave one and an ABC wave two for Facebook that ended at the 78.6% FIB. Now, the problem with Facebook is that this, this low right here of 185 is pretty tight. But if we hold above it, the length of wave one places wave two low says we are within wave three right now. And the minimum wave three target is 435. Now, that's a long way away, and, but that's actually the conservative wave three target. Even if we had a shallow wave four, the retest of the wave one high, and the length of wave one placed at the wave four low uh, was the wave five target, waves one, two, three, four, and five from this low that occurred in 2020 could take Facebook up to 630. Now, for a very high target like that, you know, I think 185 would be way too tight. But right now, if we're above 185, we can say wave two already ended. The length of wave one placed the wave too low. Could take Facebook up to the 430s, possibly a lot further than that in the big picture. We can see why they had that scary shakeout. And I think Netflix is a similar example. And I think when we look at, you know, a lot of the stocks we just talked about, a lot of the stocks we're about to talk about, we're going to look back possibly if we do end up rallying and say, hey, a lot of the blue chips were at the 61.8 to 78.6% fair, right? Disney, you know, Facebook, Starbucks, you know, Boeing, uh, Apple and Microsoft. Anyway, this is a huge one, two, three, four, five wave one. And an ABC wave two, Apple and Microsoft, they're already in large uptrends. But I think some of these huge dips in Netflix and, you know, Facebook and Disney, you know, we're going to look back and say, Oh, man, I, I miss those days when they were at these levels. Anyway, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, wave 1, and an ABC wave 2 for Netflix. If we hold right now above about 329, which is pretty tight, then wave 2 is ended. The length of wave 1 places the wave 2 low. says the wave 3 target is all the way up at 800. And yes, that would be a conservative wave 3 target. In my opinion, we'd have a shallow wave 4 and a wave 5 higher. So for a big, you know, idea like that, you know, I think 329 would be a little tight, but if we're above it, the length of wave one placed the wave too low. So a lot of the streaming stocks uh, are going to do pretty well. And I think that this is kind of holistic evidence for Roku uh, in the streaming sector. I think Disney is going to end up being a streaming stock and a travel stock. And I think Disney's another one that kind of reminds us, okay, a lot of these long-term views, right? Everyone hates the word long-term, but the idea of Chevron and ExxonMobil, you know, playing out of these long-term LA wave counts that everyone just rolls their eyes at, right? And breaking the 2014 high and doing it very, you know, impulsively. That was a crazy, you know, idea, right? So I get why people roll their eyes. Oh yeah, Boeing's gonna go to a new all-time high in the long-term, right? But if we look at what Chevron just did and, you know, what a lot of the oil stocks are about to do, maybe it's time to reconsider how outlandish that is. And I think Disney is one of those where, this is a 30 year rally, right? You know, we have like everyday Snapchat, we have everyday Instagram, we have everyday 24 hour news. It's hard for us to think long term, right? But this is a 30 year rally. In my opinion, this is a one, two, three, four, five wave one. And this was a wave two that we ended in March of 2020. From this low, I believe this is another wave one and another wave two. Now, I raised the fibs, but the 61.8% retracement is 126. That's a nice level to be above. A very wide invalidation is the 78.6% fib, which is 105. Now, I'll talk about why the wide invalidation might be, you know, something I'll consider. Because I think this is a wave one and a wave two. So the length of wave one places the wave two low says a conservative wave three target is 253. Even if we had a shallow wave four, the retest of the wave one high, the length of wave one places the wave four low 
could take Disney four ways, one, two, three, four, and five, all the way up to 328. In my, in my opinion, that would just end a large black wave three. We'd have a long sideways consolidation for wave four, but ultimately we'd head higher for wave five. So I get long term, right? We all roll our eyes, but we look at kind of some of the oil stocks and what the similarities are with where the transportation stocks are right now, right? Maybe we shouldn't be rolling our eyes at some of these long-term counts. If we look at John Deere, you know, I think John Deere and AstraZeneca I wanted to include because they've made new all-time highs recently. So why do we care? Well, this is a big name in industrials, right? This is a big holding of a lot of industrial ETFs. AstraZeneca is a healthcare name, right? So these are a healthcare stock and an industrial stock. And yeah, they might have special fundamentals, but we also kind of have to have bear counts on them if we think the market's going to crash. And when we talk about AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca and John Deere, I think we have a lot of you know evidence that says, wait a minute, is the market going to crash? Well, this is a wave one and a wave two. This is a wave three and a wave four. So the length of wave three placed in the wave four low says we're probably within a wave five right now that in the long term could take John Deere up to 616. Now, for a more precise time target, this is from 316 to you know, April. So it's basically a one year rally. So, you know, this could be a one year wave five and we may already be a couple months into it that ultimately ends at 616. So is it very likely that the stock market will crash while John Deere, you know, let's say holds above this low of uh, 326 and heads to 616? Yeah, it's possible. You know, John Deere might have really special fundamentals, but it's not super likely. And it's a very similar idea with AstraZeneca, which I'll talk about right now, because AstraZeneca just broke to a new all time high, right? So, John Deere's industrials, you know, AstraZeneca's healthcare. We got to find bear counts on these, right? And otherwise, we're arguing that the stock market's going to crash. Well, you know, John Deere rallies to 616, and, you know, AstraZeneca goes on a wave one and a wave two, and it looks like it's within a large wave three right now, conservatively. Wave three will be the length of wave one placed the wave too low. Then we have a wave four that retests the wave one high, which gives a wave five target of 82. So waves one, two, three, four, and five, in my opinion, are going to take AstraZeneca to 82. And in my opinion, that's just going to end a large wave three from this low. So AstraZeneca would consolidate sideways for a while, but then eventually it would head on a wave five higher. So if AstraZeneca is going to 82 and possibly John Deere is going to 616, you know, it's very likely that the market will crash during that time. It's possible, but it's not something that I'm going to bet the house on. I think it's more something I'll hedge for. But anyway, this is a wave one and a wave two for Boeing, right? And I know we don't like these long-term counts, but I think from this low, this is another wave one and an ABC wave two at the 61.8 to 78.6% fam. If we're above this low of 141, then this is a wave one and a wave two. The 161.8% extension is 360 for wave three. We'd have a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. We'll talk about what that could look like in the bigger picture uh, for Carnival Cruise Lines right now. But I think what we're going to see is, you know, yeah, Chevron and ExxonMobil, sure, they're going to go above the 2014, 2015 high one day puppy trades. And then I'm going to find a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I get it, right? But you know, long-term counts eventually with time, I, I think they play out. I think that we're going to see the transportation sector, you know, really follow the energy sector. This is a wave one and a wave two. I think this is another wave one and an ABC wave two at the 78.6% FIB for CCL. So really it's all risk reward, right? Could CCL go below 12? Sure. But if it doesn't, then this is a wave one and a wave two. The 161.8% extension of wave one is 43 and that would be where a wave three ends. But then even if we had a shallow wave four, the retest of the wave one high, the length of wave one placed the wave four low, says waves one, two, three, four, and five could take Carnival Cruise Lines up to 50. So we could see, you know, some of these outlandish long-term counts that were very similar to what we were talking about with oil a couple months ago. It could happen. And we see have a lot of sectors right now where we were talking about long-term counts. And now we're talking about short-term counts. And I think the, the precious metals are one of them. For Barrett Gold Corp, this is a wave one and an ABC wave two. This is a wave one, wave two. So the length of wave one placed the wave two low gives a conservative wave three target of 35. And to be honest, I don't think a lot of people have time to wait until 35, right? And for me, it's, it's what what's life going to be like when Barrett Gold Corp is at 35, right? You know, we, we talk about how bad inflation is now. And I could go on, you know, your drunk uncle's rant about inflation and gold and stuff but i mean we're talking about inflation being bad right now so let's just get into the bare gold count this is a wave one and a wave two at the 61.8 and 78.6 percent fib so i think we've ended wave two we're gonna hold about 17 the length of wave one places the wave too low says uh, 35 is a minimum wave three target even if we had a wave four the retest of the wave one high which is 31 
The length of wave one plays of the wave four low can take Bear Gold Corp to 49. So what's life going to be like then when Bear Gold Corp is at 49? Oh, it's not going to get to 49 puppy trades. Long-term counts don't play out. Okay. I hope you're right. Right? I hope you're right. I really hope you're right. <laughs> I, I'm not one of those people. Oh, I really care if I'm right or wrong. I, I you know, I'm maybe back in the day. I, oh, yeah. Hey, I got this one. right. I don't care about that because this, I, this is real, right? This is real. Look at what gas is doing. Look at what gas is doing. And if you're a young person, let me just say, it's easy for really kind of people in their, their 60s and 70s, you know, their upper 50s. It's easy for them to say, oh, yeah, no, nah, th these long-term counts are going to play out. This is alarmist, right? Uh, Chevron's never going above the 2014 high. Exxon Mobil's never going above the 2014 high, right? N none of these long-term oil counts will ever play out, right? We're just going to have whatever. We could be really young in the inflation story, right? It's not going to be a straight line, but this is Petrobras. This is PBR. This is a huge wave one and a wave two. And you're going to need a PBR because pretty soon we're going to be above 17. And that means that this is a wave one and a wave two. And the conservative wave three target is 27 for PBR. Okay. So what's life going to be like when PBR is at 27? What's life going to be like? Maybe right? it's never going to happen. What's life going to be like when this is a wave one and a wave two and we're above this wave one high, which is uh in the 80s in the upper 70s right that's the oil stock that could quintuple in the long term right oh long term counts they never play out right they never play out okay i hope you're right i hope you're right tesla right long term counts played out for this one right up oh, no no bag holder bag holder bag holder explosion this pos doesn't move this pos doesn't move this pos doesn't move we're going on a wave C lower. We're going on a wave C lower. We're going on a wave C. My bad. Sorry. Anyway, from this low, I believe Tesla formed a wave one and a wave two at the 61.8% retracement. So I've liked 690. 690 is getting a little wide, but I think Tesla's kind of shown that we're within wave three. The length of wave one placed in the wave two low says Tesla's probably not going to stop at 1400. But that is wave three's minimum target. Even if we had a shallow wave four that retested the wave one high, the length of wave one placed the wave four low could take Tesla up to the 1900s. Okay, so that would be one, two, three, four, five waves in the long term could just end a large black wave three. Now, we would have a substantial wave four correction, right? It'd be a big deal if Tesla got to 1400, right? But realistically, wave three is the 161.8% extension of wave one normally. So usually the length of wave one placed with wave too low is a conservative wave three target. But anyway, I do think that we're going to see Tesla at 1400 uh, pretty soon. And we could see Tesla beyond 1400 pretty soon. So, you know, they'll say, oh, he said it was going to crash at 1400. He's a furu. No, this is just to get a model of what one, two, three, four, five waves would look like. Even if wave four retested the wave one high, the length of wave one placed the wave four low could take Tesla up to the 1900s. So I like 690 still as a level to be above for that. Here's Enphase Energy, right? Another clean energy stock. Another clean energy stock. Um, it's a huge holding of QCLN, but it's really a huge holding of every clean energy ETF. And I don't think that's hyperbole. I really think every single clean energy ETF has this as a 6 to 8 to 9% holding. Anyway, this is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 big wave 1 and ABC wave 2. And then look at this scary 1, 2, like the scary shakeout. Both of these scary shakeouts. They were really trying to get retail out. And I think I know why. Because this was a wave 1 and a wave 2. They want all that margin. Give me, the, give me your margin shares. I know you went all in on margin. Uh, but anyway, this is a wave one and wave two. If we're above this low in the long term, the wave three target is 286. Now, we're getting pretty far from 113. We're getting pretty far from uh, this low of 108. But I do think that 285 will end up being a very, very conservative wave three target. But even if we had a shallow wave four, the retest of the wave one high, the length of wave one placed with the wave four low could take in phase energy up to 450 and i think that's a lot of supporting evidence not just with tesla uh, but it's also you know with neo in qcln so qcln holds a lot of neo and tesla and in phase energy and that's kind of where we have to remember that neo and xpev and lee right they're not just chinese growth stocks they're also clean energy stocks right so if someone's really bearish on you know 
Neo, right? Well, then they're kind of also bearish in phase energy and Tesla. Anyway, I think this is a wave one and an ABC wave two for Neo at the 61.8 to 78.6% fib. We formed this really scary wick, but I think this is an ABC correction where the length of wave A placed the wave B high is where wave C ends. Now, obviously, a lot of Chinese growth stocks uh, have a big old wick that right now is the downside risk, right, of 13. And then wave one, wave two, wave three would go way past 66. Wave three would go way past 66. We don't really need to talk about beyond 66 right now. But if at any point in time we're above 66, then from an Elliott Wave perspective, Neo is right here. And we're going to know that looking back. But a lot of times it's not about what you can look back and say, hey, that was the weather on that day. It's about when you say, hey, I think a, a hurricane's coming. I, I think a hurricane's coming. I know I get a lot of flack for Neo, but I don't even really think being bullish in the 30s and having the audacity to say, hey, we're above 30, then you can go a lot higher. I don't think I'm going to get made fun of for being bullish Neo in the 30s. But it's not about that for me, okay? It's, it's not about, oh, I was right. Uh, I was right. Oh, I was wrong about this one, right? I got to wear the scarlet letter. Oh, no, now I'm, you know, what someone, the bull Jesus. Okay, you don't need to stroke my ego when, you know, we see an explosion, but I'm not going to go read your whatever crap on a day. Everything's down, you know, three, four percent. Anyway, here's Neo. This is a wave one and a wave two. I think we hold above 13 and go on an explosive wave three, well beyond 66. That confirms Neo is Tesla here below 13 you know maybe not anyway here is lee auto i think it's very supporting evidence uh for not just neo obviously but it's you know kind of another reminder that the chinese growth stocks are clean energy stocks so we can use evidence you know from clean energy stocks like Enphase energy like tesla and it's really a, a sector based analysis right everyone's got you know the same spy count where this is the ABC correction, right? But if you go ask them, hey, how, how do you recreate that count on AstraZeneca? They don't, they don't have, a, oh, that's a, a, this is an expanded flat, right? Okay, well, that's an expanded, is this, what about John Deere? Is this an expanded flat? Yeah, yeah, that's an expanded flat. It's, you just looked at the chart, right? Because you just stare at SPY. It's the same kind of holistic view that needs to be taken when analyzing stocks in the same sector, especially in the same ETF. So all the correlation analysis usually comes from sector ETF, you know, allocation. Anyway, this is a wave one and a wave two. I think this is another wave one and another wave two. I think we hold above 15, you know, a little tighter would be 16. I'm going to hold Lee and XPEV and the Chinese growth stocks for a very long time. One, because if, if we just look at, if we just look at Lee Auto and we just look at XPEV and we just look at Alibaba and Wayfair, right? They're not just Chinese growth stocks, but they're also exposure to the e-commerce sector the entire e-commerce sector and they're also exposure to the chinese the clean energy sector so for me if i buy lee auto and xpev then if i'm wrong then that means i'll never need exposure to not just the chinese growth stocks but also i'll never need exposure to the clean energy stocks and in the case of alibaba i'll never need exposure to the e-commerce sector which may be a possibility but i don't think that's the most likely possibility I think this is a wave one and a wave two. So the wave three target is the 161.8% extension. That is 50. I'm going to hold um, these Chinese growth stocks for a long time. I know we don't like that word long term, but that's you know where a lot of the, the money is made. Anyway, this is a one, two, three, four, five wave one and an ABC wave two for plug power. Just wanted to remind that the Chinese growth stocks are clean energy stocks. And I think there's a lot of kind of small cap names, right? Oh, we roll our eyes. The idea that Lee could be in the 50s, you know, Neo could be at all time high, right? But there's a lot of really kind of small cap growth stocks. I could list the, like fuel cell, maybe workhorse, maybe, you know, a lot of these small cap ESG names that we haven't thought about since 2020 they're probably going to join a rally with tesla and in-phase energy in my opinion and i think that plug power is another example of a small cap esg name that could be a wave one and a wave two so if we're above you know 17 then the minimum expectation for wave three is that it goes and makes a new all-time high above the wave one high and that's 75 right so what i'm trying to show with plug power is that there's a lot of kind of explosive upside right i could talk about you know a lot of these small cap clean energy names i chose plug power for this video here's alibaba i think this is a one two three four five wave one and this is an abc wave two i think that we're gonna see in my opinion this this wick this low on this weekly candle 
I think we're going to see it hold for not just Neo, but also for Alibaba. I think this is a wave one and a wave two. The length of wave one plays the wave two low, says a very conservative wave three target is 334. Now, realis realistically, wave three would not stop at 334 because wave three usually goes to the 161.8% extension of wave one. But even if we had a wave four, the retest is the wave one high. The length of wave one plays the wave four low, says waves one, two, three, four, and five on Alibaba's all time chart could take it up to 580 so that is when i'll begin to scale out if i'm right anyway here's amazon and if i'm wrong then great i never need exposure to e-commerce right like okay i'll never need exposure to e-commerce weren't we all shopify bulls like five months ago anyway this is a wave one and wave two this is a huge wave three and an abc correction that ends wave four at the 38.2 percent fit for the biggest you know e-commerce stock it's certainly the biggest holding of onln if it's above the 50 percent fib which is about 2700 the length of wave three places the wave four low gives a wave five target of about 4821 we could be talking about in the future very similar to netflix the idea that this is not a wave three and a wave four we're gonna know that's the case if we go beyond uh 4821 and also if we make a new high um in price and on the rsi within the cycle from this 2018 low. But anyway, we don't really need to even talk about that because if we're at the 50% FIB and we're above it, the length of wave three places the wave four low is still substantial upside uh, for Amazon. In my opinion, this is about to be confirmed when Amazon makes a new high above uh, 3,700 that we are within wave five and that minimum target, we're gonna start saying the word minimum more and more when we approach it of 4,821. So that's Amazon. It's kind of a reminder that not just the e-commerce stocks, but also the market, right? There's a lot of blue chips. I know that, you know, you can't call a stock like Shopify or Roku, a blue chip when it's down, right? But we certainly love to do it when they're up. And I think this is just the clearest example of what happened to the fundamentals, guys. I mean, come on. You guys know what I'm talking about. Every single person who wrote about growth and fundamentals and come on. We, they, just, this is, they just raved about this stock. They just raved about it. And now it's a dog at the 61.8% fit, right? This is what distinguishes... Elliott way from any other type of analysis besides Wyckoff is that it acknowledges that dips are part of the the, the movie, right? We all, we've all seen that that same chart where it's like, oh, you know, this is the psychology of the market cycle and everyone's really bullish at the top and then they're they're bearish at the low and this is the best opportunity. Right, but Elliott Wave and Wyckoff, they're the only forms of technical analysis that acknowledge, hey, yeah, no, there is a lot of opportunity during the dips, right? And even if yeah, it, it keeps dipping. Well, eventually, if it does recover, we can find upside targets that make getting called a bag holder worth it. And I think for Shopify, this is a wave one and a wave two. And what's the point of fundamental analysis? Is as soon as there's an earnings report, up, oh, it's a dog. Great. Great. This is a wave one and a wave two. The length of wave one places the wave two low gives a minimum wave three target of 2,249. We don't need to talk about beyond that. If we're above 391, uh, that's a pretty wide level and a little tighter would be this low of, I believe that's 510. But I think that 391 is a great invalidation. 510 is a little tight for a long-term idea. But I think we're going to see that this is a wave one and a wave two. We're going to see Shopify bounce from the 61.8 to 78.6% fib. And this chart, just look at this chart kind of mentally in your head. Okay, and now look at this chart. Okay not that chart this one can you see a difference you know i can't i think you know holistically there's a good reason for me to want to be exposed to the e-commerce sector i think this is a one two three four five wave one and an abc wave two for paypal right and you know it's easy to call a stock like shopify and paypal a blue chip when it's rallying but you know as we've all seen the peak opportunity is when everyone gets you know i i you know it's a dog right I don't think that PayPal is a dog. I don't think that Shopify is a dog. And I think holistically, when we look at the e-commerce sector, these are a lot of 61.8 to 78.6% fibs that we're in right now for, and I know we can't call PayPal a blue chip. We can't call Roku a blue chip. We can't call Shopify a blue chip yet. But Facebook is also at the 61.8 to 78.6% fib. Disney's at the 50 to 61.8% fib. Starbucks is at the 50 to 61.8% fib. Boeing is could do what oil was about to do at the 61.8 to 78.6 percent fib we have a lot of blue chips in this market and i think some of the blue chips we're not calling blue chips right now but we will be in the future i think paypal and shopify will be one of them i think roku too anyway this is a wave one and a wave two i think we hold above 93 that's way too tight this low right here of 82 is a lot wider 
And I think that the very minimum expectation for Wave 3 is that we would break above 310. Kind of like Neo in 66, we don't need to talk about beyond that. But I do believe we would see substantially beyond that uh, for Wave 3, have a shallow Wave 4 and 5 higher. We would see a lot of long-term upside, right? We all hate the word long-term, but if you look at Amazon's chart, if you look at MasterCard's chart, this is something I've done a lot, you know, it's just on my channel show, hey, stocks that are big winners, they have 61.8 to 78.6% retracements, right? Like, we look at Wayfair, we, we have multiple, right? Wayfair does this all the time. Anyway, this is PayPal. It's a wave one and a wave two at the 61.8 to 78.6% FIB. I think we hold 82. I think 93 is way too tight. And we go on a new rally to a new all-time high for wave three. And it most likely would go well beyond 310. I think Shopify is an almost identical chart that really kind of supports that idea. One, two, three, four, five waves, Substack. Wave two, it's a dog. All right. And I think that now we're calling PayPal, you know, S coins. I don't think PayPal is an S coin. And we'll talk about some S coins. I don't think that calling PayPal an S coin is going to be a insult in the future. Anyway, here is Roku. This is a one, two, three, four, five wave one and an ABC wave two at the 61.8 to 78.6% FIB. So the problem with Roku is we don't have a load to say, hey, that's the downside risk that's really meaningful. I mean, this is 58. That's way too wide, but I do believe this is a one, two, three, four, five wave one and an ABC wave two. Maybe Roku pretty soon will give a nice load to trade against. It'll form a wave one and a wave two to trade against what could be a wave too low right now of about 97. But I think that ultimately, this is a wave one and a wave two, very similar to Netflix. It's going to enter wave three in the streaming sector. I think the wave one plays the way too low. So a conservative wave three target is 560. Then most likely wave three would go well beyond that. But even if we had a wave four that retested the wave one high, wave five would be the length of wave one placed the wave four low. And that could take Roku in the big picture to the 900s, the 950s even. And stocks that go on crazy rallies like that, well, guess what? They also have big dips. And if you look at Bitcoin's chart, you look at Amazon's chart, you look at Netflix's chart, you look at NVIDIA's chart, they do it more than once. Here is AMC. Okay, I know it sounds silly to talk about the meme stocks. Unfortunately, one, the meme stocks might be a sector that could, maybe for a week or two, hog some money from the market. Okay, that, that could happen. I'm not too worried about that happening. But the meme stocks are a sector, and they're a sector that the options market is very interested in. Okay, so let's talk about these option screeners. This is iVolatility.com's um, top 200 volume and open interest. This is their advanced ranker sample. This is completely free if you make an account with your email. Okay which you know, do whatever you want. But anyway, I, I don't see why anyone, you know, especially after, you know, watching this channel or even having any interest in my work, wouldn't be looking at the bar chart straddle on strangle screener, you know, every day in, in this. But anyway, if we look right here, what I want to show what recently happened uh, in oil and, you know, some other examples. But if we look at December 10th, uh, this is what the top 200 volume and open interest stocks were that also had very low implied volatility. So let's just kind of review these stocks up here in the top half of this box. They have very high uh, IV rank. So they have very expensive, expensive options because their implied volatility is very high. So if I'm a big money manager, right? And I see that Novavax's IV rank is 84%, right? And I go tell my boss, Hey boss, I want to open up a short strangle, uh, sorry, a, a long straddle on Novavax, where I buy a call and I buy a put, uh, and they have the same strike price and I just hold it, hoping for a big move, right? He's not gonna be letting me manage money because Novavax right now has very expensive options, okay? He's gonna want me to sell a call and sell a put on Novavax and use that big institutional collateral to manage that risk, right? But these stocks down here, these have the top 200 volume and open interest, but they also have the lowest implied volatility rank and percentile. So if I went up to my boss when, XLE had 2% OI uh, implied volatility rank. And I said, hey boss, I wanna buy a call and a put uh, with the same strike and the same expiration on XLE and I just wanna hold it. Well, he probably would let me manage money because this picture was taken on December 10th and these very cheap options um, ended up really benefiting people who had a long straddle and a long strangle position. So we use these screeners to see, hey, the options market is buying a lot of 
a lot of options on, on these stocks. And they're doing it when implied volatility is very cheap. So that means they're probably expecting a large move like they were in November, right? This is mid-November, November 15th. We see Chevron, Energy Transfer, British Petroleum, and Royal Dutch Shell. And we also see Virgin Galactic. We'll talk about the meme stocks in a second. But all these oil stocks like Chevron that exploded to a new all-time high, right? They're on the, um, the top 200 open interest in volume while they have low implied volatility. So that means institutions were loading up cheap options and they were playing a large move. And for all these stocks so far, besides Virgin Galactic, it's uh, resolved in a move to the upside. So we'll talk about the meme stocks in a second. Here's another example, just because it's not just the oil stocks. This is a very common occurrence where you see stocks like this picture from March 21st, 2021, AMD, Home Depot, Pfizer, and, and Merck in Royal Caribbean. Three of these stocks exploded to the upside from March 21st. I think Merck did a, a little bit of a pop in Royal Caribbean. I think it's gone down actually. So it's not a magic screener, but it's letting us know, hey, uh, institutions, they're buying lots of cheap options on AMD, uh, Home Depot, and Pfizer in March of 2021. And they're also doing that on the oil stocks like Oxy and XLE and Cleveland Cliffs, right? Cleveland Cliffs didn't that stock do something recently um, because of fundamentals, right, that no one could have possibly known about. And here's another example of oil in November, right? Chevron, ET, British Petroleum. It's a pretty clear message. Hey, the institutions are looking for a large move that a lot of retail traders probably don't expect. And they're buying lots of cheap options on one kind of sector. The reason that I bring all this up is one, because Apple and AMD and Microsoft, they're on the bar chart strong string of screener a lot. Anyway, so are the meme stocks, okay? So I know that sounds silly, right? It sounds silly. This picture is from... March 1st of 2022. And isn't this kind of a clear theme? Hey, they're buying lots of options on GameStop, Rocket Mortgage, Sundial, and AMC Theaters. And they're looking for a huge move in these names. Well, I gotta look at that. Hey, those stocks kind of have something in common. They're all meme stocks, okay? Anyway, the institutions are playing a huge move. And we saw AMC on the bar chart straddle and strangle screener in June, uh, in, in May, before it exploded and had this rally. And now we're seeing what I would consider unprecedented option buying. So I personally won't take a position in AMC because I don't think it has a fundamental margin of safety. But I do think, personally, that AMC won't go below 12.90. I think this is wave one and wave two. We just had a new quarter. We just had quad witching. And this could be not the only meme stock that has a big rally. We have kind of similar you know, evidence from a lot of meme stocks, but I do think that this is a wave one and an ABC wave two. I'm not trying to get carried away with AMC, but I think that we will hold above 12. And the minimum wave three expectation is that it goes above 72, right? And I think a lot of people, oh, that's silly, right? AMC is not going to go above 72. I'm not going to be very sad if I miss it, but I think we could see this is wave one and wave two. And the options market is playing a much bigger move than I'm willing to say out loud because wave three does not just go make a new high above wave one usually goes way past the wave one high. And I think that AMC, we could just say if it's above 12.90, I'm not going to bet on it, uh, bet against it at all. I'm not going to bet on it either, but I, it is a meme stock and Sundial Growers is a meme stock. It's a very similar situation, right? They say the pot stocks are, uh, the pot stocks are meme stocks. And then they say they have their own fundamentals. I think the pot stocks are actually a commodities play secretly. But anyway, this is a wave one and a wave two for Sundial Growers. And I know it sounds crazy that Sundial Growers has entered a wave three to the 161.8% extension of wave one, which is 6.32, but Tilray, ACB, Sundial Growers, very similar to a, uh, AMC, very similar to Blackberry, very similar to Nokia and GameStop for not just the past three months, but really the past four or five months. They've been all over the bar charts, straddle and finger screener, and you know, on these same you know, high volume and open interest, but low implied volatility. So we could see, this is wave one and wave two. I just think that I want to include some meme stocks, maybe have some fun. We, I expect that AMC will go above 72, and I do expect that Sundial Growers eventually, in the long term, but realistically, they're probably not going to do the conservative thing. And I don't think the options market expects them to do the conservative thing. But anyway, I think this is wave one and wave two. Wave three, the 161.8% extension, is all the way up at 6.32. And I don't think... Realistically, if I ever took a position in these, I would manage the risk with position size, 
but I don't think we're gonna break these recent lows of about 12 for AMC or about 45, 46 cents for stunned owl growers. Anyway, just wanted to have some fun. But also, unfortunately, Pounder has been grouped with the meme stock. Now, Pounder, I feel very similar to Pounder the way I do with Nokia, where it's not actually a meme stock. And in the very back of my mind, I kind of wonder, I look at the silver charts, I look at the silver miners, I kind of wonder, are they gonna blame silvers expl exploding on the Redditors? I really wonder, because we see SLV and AG, they're all over the eyeball utility screener. Let me just check my battery, anyway. Okay, I'm good, but anyway. SLV and AG, they're all over this exact screener. Right? And they were all over the screener with oil, and now we've seen oil explode. So what I've been thinking for a long time was, oh, yeah, obviously they're going to blame silver and AG on, you know, whatever they're blaming oil on, right? Um, and I'm not trying to downplay what they're blaming oil on, but none of them are, are blaming it on this, right? None of them are blaming it on this. The, the institutions made a lot of money on Chevron, you know? I think they're about to make a lot of money on ET. Anyway, what we could see is that, unfortunately, Pounder has been grouped as a meme stock. And what I'm trying to say, maybe with silver, just in the back of my mind, I kind of got lost on my own train of thought. But I wonder if they're going to blame silver and First Majestic exploding on the Redditors. I wonder that. And I thought that was, I didn't even really think about that until this week when I just saw them say, oh, yeah, you know, the apes of AMC. They made AMC explode. I'm kind of like, they're not going to try this again with silver, are they? I'm wondering. But they said, unfortunately, that Pounder and Nokia uh, are meme stocks. And those are the two meme stocks. I don't think those are meme stocks, okay? I think they're just playing with you. Rocket Mortgage, Rocket Mortgage, by the way, I, I've never said keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on Rocket Mortgage. Keep an eye on BlackBerry. That's all I'm going to say. Keep an eye on those, right? I get one or two keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on Rocket Mortgage keep an eye on blackberry but i think the uh, pounder is very similar to nokia where they wanted us to group it as a meme stock maybe similar to rocket mortgage but i don't think pounder is actually a meme stock but it has seen kind of this kind of crazy options activity anyway this is a wave one and i believe this is an abc wave two i think right now there's still really nice risk reward above 8.90 to say that was wave one this is wave two the minimum wave three expectation is 45 and like a lot of the minimum wave threes i've talked about with paypal and neo i don't think it's actually going to stop at 45 if wave three plays out but that would be a substantial return from 8.90 so yeah i've been bullish uh, pounder and i was expecting for it to hold this low i was expecting neo to hold this low i was expecting a lot of the arc names to hold that low in um may that they formed and they didn't okay so it happens but i do think this is a wave one and a wave two and i think we're going to see a explosion in wave three, uh, if we're above 8.90 per pounder, let's talk about some of these cryptocurrencies. We've seen them move a little bit very quietly all of a sudden. You know, we're seeing Marathon Patent Group get close to 30. I think this is a wave one and a wave two. I think this is another wave one and an ABC wave two. Now, we've seen ADA uh, Cardano rally recently. I really just want to focus on Marathon Patent Group, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. But I think this is a wave one and a wave two for Mara. And I think we're going to see it turn around. I think we're going to see it hold above 18.32. And it's going to go wave one, wave two, wave three up to 83. So the 78.6% FIB is 17.86. That's basically the same as 18.62. I think this is wave one, ABC wave two. Like I said, the minimum expectation for wave three, if it plays out, is that it would at least break above 83. We can talk about much further targets beyond that. And I do think we're going to have to. I do think we're going to have to because very quietly, the Bitcoin chart in USD is starting to look pretty similar to that bitcoin ruble chart I don't, that was a joke a few weeks ago but now it's kind of being a little uncanny in my opinion if we look at bitcoin right now on the all-time chart huge wave one and wave two and i was kind of tweeting in all caps about bitcoin oh no those long-term counts don't play out okay exponential growth takes time so does reinvesting dividends so does compounding gains from selling options okay no one really makes money thinking about being called a bag holder tomorrow I think that this is a wave one and a wave two that formed from this low. It's very similar to HUT, this June low. Wave one, wave two, the only wave one placed at the wave two low conservatively gives a wave three target of 73K. Now, I don't think that Bitcoin will stop at 73K. So please don't, if Bitcoin goes and explodes to 100K, 
Don't go, oh, Puppy Trade said the Bitcoin would stop at 73K. He said Tesla would stop at 1400, right? And, and now Tesla's at 1700. Now Bitcoin's at 85K, right? He was wrong. Okay, no. This is just to get a one, two, wave three minimum target. Because even if we had a shallow wave four that retested the wave one high, the length of wave one places the wave four low would give a conservative wave five target in the future of 109,000. So this is for me to get a, a model, right? I'm, I'm doing trying to be as statistical as possible. I'm not actually trying to predict the future. That's just kind of the byproduct of doing lots of statistical analysis, right? And I'm not perfect. I'm not even trying to be, right? But I do think this is a wave one and a wave two. The minimum wave three target would be 73K. Realistically, Bitcoin could go to the 161.8% extension of wave one, which would be a lot further. But even if we had a shallow wave four, the retest of the wave one high, the length of wave one placed at the wave four low would take Bitcoin to 109,000 for waves one, two, three, four, and five. And I think that would end a large red wave three on the all-time chart. We'll talk about Ethereum. Ethereum is basically the exact same. I think Ethereum on the all-time chart could be a little more conservative view that this isn't a big wave one and wave two like it is for Bitcoin. It's a wave three and a wave four. I don't really think that's accurate. And just like Bitcoin, I don't really think it matters. I think that uh, even if this is a wave three or wave four, or even if it's a massive wave one and wave two, all that really matters is that this is a wave one. It looks like it's subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. And this is an ABC correction that looks like it ended at the 78.6% FIB. So a little tight for something with a real high beta is 21.6, 2,163. If we're above that, this is wave one and wave two. I still like 1709 as a really wide invalidation. I'll talk about why in a second. But if we're above that, then the length of wave one placed the wave too low gives a, yes, a minimum wave three target, a minimum wave three target of 5.3K. So if Ethereum goes and explodes to 7,000, don't say, oh, he said it was gonna stop at 5.3K. People have said that before. I've been like, yeah, I think the minimum target is, is X, Y, Z. And then we blow past it. And they're like, oh, you said it was going to, you said SPY was going to stop at 406. Okay. I did not say SPY was going to stop at 406. Anyway, I made it very clear my SPY target was 460. Anyway, it happens all the time. Anyway, one, two, the length of wave one placed the wave too low gives a minimum wave three target of 5.3K. Even if we had a shallow wave four, the retest of the wave one high and wave five was the length of wave one placed the wave four low. The reason I like 1700 as a wide invalidation is because waste one, two, three, four, and five could take Ethereum all the way to that big round number of 8,000.